Welcome to the 70th annual Portsmouth Invitational Tournament here in beautiful Portsmouth, Virginia. I am James Blackburn. to be joining you on the pod or on the uh, stream today, and I'm joined by my partner in the booth, Matt Jones. Matt, seems like we never left this, left this place. Right back in one of our favorite places on earth, Portsmouth Invitational, uh, an annual tradition. Yes, sir. It's, it's. I was telling somebody earlier. It's like this place is never changed in the uh, all the years I've been here and like I said this is now 70 years they did get new bleachers this year though so that's probably the only change I think this place has seen no it's definitely uh, a, an interesting feel uh, very unique to, to pro basketball for sure being in a, a very uh, high-end high school venue but uh, you know almost like a high school game very community oriented everyone's got it there's not a bad seat in the house and uh, you're you know sitting right on top of the floor absolutely so 
Uh, we're going to get right into it. So this is our first game of the event. Again, we're going to have two games tonight, uh, three games tomorrow, three games Friday, and then four games Saturday. And all of these games will be on prep spin, so make sure you check them out. Uh, but right into it, we've got Portsmouth Partnership tonight in the white. And then in the blue jerseys, we have Sales Systems Limited. Matt, I know you see a lot of players throughout the year. Tell me about a guy that you're really excited about. Um, and I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Portsmouth Sports Club is in the white. There's Portsmouth Sports Club and Portsmouth Partnership. So it gets kind of confusing, but you'll see partnership play tomorrow. But Matt, again, what are a couple of guys that the audience is going to see tonight that you're excited to, to watch? Yeah, for uh, Portsmouth Sports Club, looking at number four in white, Aaron Estrada, fresh off a of Final Four appearance with the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, he's a 6'4 guard who did his uh, grad year with the Crimson Tide this year and a uh, prolific scorer, scored a lot of points uh, at the mid-major level and then had, had a great year in the SEC. Um, definitely a guy got to watch, guy who can really fill it up. Uh, and then transitioning over to the Jandy, uh, Jandy King squad in blue, uh, number 13, Kevin Cross from Tulane, 6'7", 225, uh, kind of a, a, a tweener, a 3'4", 4'3", who can do a little bit of everything. If you look at him statistically this year, scored about 17 points, got seven rebounds, four assists, so can just do a little bit of everything. Uh, look to have, look to see him uh, have, have a good weekend here just with his versatility, and you can kind of plug and play him anywhere and in this type of environment where these squads haven't got a whole lot of time to to play together I think he can be you know a, a huge asset no that's awesome um and of course the audience if they've watched college basketball of course know who Estrada is after Alabama had that under, unbelievable run um I'm looking forward to seeing number 11 uh Matt in in um white Portsmouth Sports Club KJ Jones he's the only non-D1 guy here he was the division two national player of the year Average north of 25 a game. Got to see him a couple times a person this year. Has a very Kawhi Leonard-ish game. Great in the mid-range. Really good footwork. Um, can really shoot the three as well. And then for Johnny King, uh, Hunter Couture out of Virginia Tech. His coach, head coach for Virginia Tech, Mike Young, is here in the audience to watch him tonight. And Hunter had a great career at Virginia Tech. Uh, I look for him. He can potentially get really hot in this tournament because he can really shoot the ball and um, you know, could possibly have a couple of games, 20 plus, I could see him hitting the three ball. So uh, we will see as we count down, we've got about a minute until they get the national anthems and uh, we've got a referee squad ready. We already had the mayor of Portsmouth on the court. So I mean, we got a star studded event here. Uh, always fun to come out here and just see uh, how much this event means to the community. Um, meet all sorts of people from the area who are always so welcoming to all of us who come into town for this every year. Absolutely. So they always do a great job of taking care of everybody. And we'll be talking a lot more about this on the broadcast, but the audience is full of decision makers. All 30 NBA teams here present, scouts, GMs player personnel directors, and then you've got a host of coaches and general managers from the international ranks with Artie Saul, our, our guys from Italy here. We've got France, Korea, Japan, a lot of different leagues that are here to make decisions on these guys. We're gonna take a short break, and let you guys listen in as we have the national anthem and the starting lineup. this time, to get things started, we ask that you all please rise if you are able, as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. <laughs>
against Jerry King, the visiting team. At this time, time to meet the teams. First, for the visitors, Jerry King. A center from Mississippi State, number 24, Tolu Smith III. A forward from Cleveland State, number 14, Tristan Inaruna. A forward from Tulane, number 13, Kevin Cross. A forward from UNLV, number 12, Keelan Boone. A forward from Mississippi, number 11, Alan Flanagan. A guard from Virginia Tech, number 10, Hunter Couture. A guard from Michigan State, number 5, A.J. Hogger Jr. And a guard from SIU, number 3, Xavier Johnson. The coaches for Jenny King, Mike Holland, and Roland Ross, and from the NBA, Cynthia Cooper. Now it's time to introduce the home team, the Portsmouth Sports Club. A center from St. John's, number 25, Joel Soriano. A forward from Wisconsin, number 15, Tyler Wall. A forward from UNC Asheville, number 14, Drew Pember. Forward from Villanova, number 12, Tyler Burton. A guard from Emmanuel, number 11, KJ Jones, a second. A guard from Oregon, number 10, Jermaine Cousinard. A guard from Alabama, number 4, Aaron Estrada. And a guard from McNeese State, number 2, Shahada Wells. The coaches for the Portsmouth Sports Club, Charles Thomas with Paul Hall, and from the NBA, Jessica Braylon. The officials for our first game will be Ryan Sassano, Kelly Bloomfield, and Sarah Williams. And Matt, we're back after the national anthem, and the audience was able to, the viewers were able to kind of see some of the rosters that we've got. So we've got our starters out there, and right away we've got our big man matchup between Joel Soriano from St. John's, who just missed out on the tournament this year playing for Rick Patino. And he'll be go going up against Tolu Smith, number 24 in the blue jersey. So two six eleven bigs going right at it on the jump ball. Always interesting in these, like I said, mentioned earlier, uh, teams don't have a ton of time to practice. So here early on, it'll be interesting to see as they, they feel, feel each other out and kind of get a feel for playing with one another. And we always talk about each year, too, all the adjustments these guys have to make. You know, of course, playing in front of a crowd, yes, but not really a crowd that cheers. And then you've got a new basketball, you've got an NBA three-point line, you've got a mix of NBA and NCAA rules. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes and see how these guys adjust. Jim's starting to fill out nicely here for our first game. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Soriano in the mid post. Off the back of the rim, Hunter Couture gets the rebound and leads it for Johnny King. Couture with another rebound. There's an early foul there for Soriano on Smith. Smith earns himself two shots. So always interesting to see how they call the games out here, Matt. Traditionally, they've called it very loosely. You don't see a lot of fouls. They, they like to see these guys get up and down. You'll see great flow, no media timeouts, uh, no reviews, media reviews, and uh, 
and they let these guys get after it, get kind of get scrappy. So it's good to good to watch and good basketballs, especially for our viewers at home. First. That might have been the quickest foul, actually, Matt, in Portsmouth history. Go First ahead, 30 right. minutes, seconds we at, 35 seconds in. <laughs> we have to mark that one down. So we'll see if White, if Portsmouth Sports Club, can get into a set here. First time with the half-court set. A little double drag action here. Here's Wells gets into the paint. Nice little doopsie do into the off the back of the backboard for Shahada Wells from McNeese State with his coach Will Wade here watching him. Great entry pass there. Our Jermaine Cousinard from Oregon saw Soriano had. Smith absolutely buried in the paint. Big body down that low. Not a whole lot you can do but foul. Absolutely. So that's that's one foul each already for the two bigs. Now, I might be wrong on this, but I want to say they let them get away with more than five fouls. I think there might be an unlimited amount. <laughs> I don't remember many players in Portsmouth uh, history fouling out, so I think you might be right. Again, we play with a S multiple sets of rules at this event. Again, a mix of NBA and NCAA rules. That's playing again off the back of the rim for the miss. And here comes Wells, uses the high ball screen. Well, he thought he saw, well, I'm sorry, that was not Wells. That was Wells that was in the corner. That was Usenard that was looking for Wells. Again, like you said, only one practice coming in. So you can see a little miscommunication early, but see how these players can adjust as the game goes. A big time part of the game, just figuring out how to play with different guys and communicate through some of the, the, the lack of understanding of playing with each other, which is something they're all going to experience here at the pro level. Tough shot there for playing again. And here comes Sportsman Sports Club on the break. Nice hands from Gator. Goes out of bounds. Little raggedy here to start. Guys trying to feel their way back in. Uh, always kind of interesting, too. You don't know how much live play these guys have been doing. They've all been in the gym working on their game, of course, but not a, a ton of opportunities to play pickup for some of these guys. So it may have been a minute since they've been able to get up and down. Some of these guys, especially ones that went into the tournament, might have taken some time off. There's Drew Pember from UNC Asheville, Big South Player of the Year, and that's what he does, Matt. He is a stretch big that's pretty mobile, athletic, can block shots, and uh, not a lot of scouts have probably seen him, but he's going to be an interesting guy to watch here. He plays with a lot of energy, too. I like him. Yeah, quick, compact stroke. Got that off in a hurry. Here's Burton with a nice no-look pass for Soriano, who finishes with probably a little contact there. And we have an early 9-1 lead for Portsmouth. Flanagan looks, he's got the size advantage in the post. Lefty banks it in. Nice little KJ fadeaway there for Allen Flanagan from Mississippi, 6'6", 215, nice looking wing prospect. Playing in this small of an environment, one of the cool things I think is you can really hear guys communicate offensively, defensively. You start to hear out what hear what ball screen coverages they're in, who's really talking, who's understanding scheme, that type of thing. And I think that's a a great, great way to kind of show some of the intangible things that this whole uh, line of NBA scouts here are looking to see. No, definitely. And like we said earlier, I mean, there's no fans clapping, there's nobody booing, there's no music in between. So you can honestly, even from our vantage point, which is about midway up on the bleachers here, uh, you can you can hear these guys talking, like you said, and, and they've got to do that because a lot of these guys have never played with each other before. Many unique aspects of this event. There's Shahada Wells puts in the second free throw. 
to give them 10 points already on the scoreboard as they're on, on pace here for quite a few points. We got a little floppy action. You can see a lot of NBA style sets. That's the wrong guy to leave open. That's Couture's second wide open three. And he could hit it from that range, Matt. I don't expect him to miss too many more wide open ones the rest of the weekend. Good drop off. Not sure how many times uh, Smith led the break in uh, college, so <laughs> nice to see the big man be able to handle it, not turn it over, and get it off to his backcourt partner. Early shot there. Not sure that's the one that they were looking for by Burton. Let's see if uh, Johnny King can capitalize and send my transition here. Boom. Flanagan getting right back to his back to the basket game. That's his wheelhouse, though, in that mid post. He's shot probably four or five of those already in this game. Hasn't really been able to find it, but he's not he's not hesitant about putting it up. Little bad spacing here for Portsmouth Sports Club on that possession. And here we go again in fast break. Little messy, like you said, Matt, both teams. That's just a poor entry pass. You got a mismatch on the size in the post. A little bit of <laughs> AAU open gym feel here right now. Oh, a nice up and under finish. Great job by Wells to avoid the shot blocker there. Went up on the opposite side. Lanigan thought he was going to staple that thing. Wells living in the paint here early. Finding his way in there has made some pretty good decisions. There's Couture. He is there not is. shy about there putting is. it up. That time he gets to, he's gonna get three free ones after the foul. And we've got some substitutions now coming in. Both teams, Matt. So we've got number 15 in white, Tyler Wall from Wisconsin checking in. KJ Jones, number 11 checking in. And I missed the other guys because they went into a timeout. We'll just keep it here though and uh, continue to talk to you guys that are that are listening and watching. Um, like you said, Matt, what, what do you see early on from this uh, for the first five minutes? I think it's a mixture of guys figuring out who to play together. And then as a coach, you know, it's tough to be a player and only have one practice. But it's also tough to be a coach and only have one practice to really have a great feel of what, what guys can play together, who fits together, who doesn't. Uh, so, I, you know, as the game goes on, the weekend goes on, there, there always seems to be a little bit more flow uh, where once there's a better feel between the coaches and the players of, of who goes with who. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. And just to uh, let everybody know how this works, is this is a tournament. So everybody's guaranteed three games. And if you win, obviously, you're in the winner's bracket. Um, the, the two teams right now playing, if the winner of this will not play again until Friday. The loser will play tomorrow at 315 against the loser from the 9 o'clock game from the night. So if you're on this first day and you lose, you uh, – you're coming off a short rest, less than 24 hours, you're right back again. Another interesting aspect of the event for sure. Uh, some of these guys, I think it's definitely beneficial to ha have that day to rest and uh, you know, be able to kick back a little bit as opposed to having a quick turnaround and playing two games before, uh, b before we even get to the night of this, uh, the second night. Yeah, and traditionally the, uh, the night games on Thursday and Friday are some of the heaviest attended as far as the audience usually Wednesday and Saturday is a little light but I'm pretty happy about the turnout here um, for a 7 p.m. game on Wednesday night it's it's good as Couture cashes it in and after that early lead for Portsmouth Sports Club uh, Johnny King has come back and now down just four after some sloppy play Drew Pember looks for a second three that one off the front of the rim that was a little deep that was a step or two behind the NBA line and uh, got a new player, Kevin Cross from Tulane in the game who got that rebound. Hunter Couture again with that super quick release in and out. He, he's, I mean, he's putting them up there and they've all looked like they're going in. He got that one off in a hurry. No, no dip on the shot, flicked it, good looking stroke. As we keep saying, you can't leave him open. If he, if he misses four in a row, that means he's probably about to make about four in a row. We talked about him in the, before the game about how he could go off for 20, and a lot of that's just because he's not going to be shy about putting him up. 
Definitely a guy that's lit up the ACC the last four years, five years for the Virginia Tech Cokies. Nice little bounce pass there to the roller. A lot of bullying going on here early, trying to find mismatches. Something I'd like to see is a little more movement on the weak side, getting a little stagnant. As we said, these guys are figuring out, playing with one another, with a little communication to get somebody maybe loose on the backside for an easy one. Yeah, and you know, uh, Johnny King's really looking to go inside to their size advantage. Early in this game, Matt, a lot of post-ups, mid-post, so usually sometimes at these events, the guards could get a little ball dominant, kind of too happy with the ball, dribbling it, but uh, it's good to see them sharing it and get the bigs involved early. Passes per possession and the amount of times the ball can get reversed from one side of the floor to another. I think that's uh, the, the simple formula for winning in this type of environment. And you see a lot of these teams here could be running the same sets. You can see floppy actions. You can see uh, zoom actions, dribble handoffs, pistol actions. Um, some drag ball screen here from uh, Portsmouth. We've seen a couple double drag action with some pop and dive action out of it as well. Yeah, sometimes your horn actions too. Looks like he got away with the walk. That was Tyler Burton. Now they're going right back to Tyler Wall, just pounding it inside. And uh, I think they're going to call it. Yeah, they've got him with the shot clock violation there. So great defense that time. But Johnny King is digging in defensively. And I don't have the stats in front of me, but I would probably say that Portsmouth Sports Club is on a two or three minute scoring drought right now at least. Some highs and some lows for sure. Kevin Cross gets it over, crosses it back, now gets it back. Looks inside for the size advantage. There it is again, there's Boone, just shoots right over. Nice tip out that time by Aranio from Cleveland State. Now Cle gets it out to Kevin Cross, first shot of the game. He hits the NBA three. Kevin Cross from Tulane, Matt Jones, you talked about him before the, the show. A Swiss Army knife showing his range right there. Caught in rhythm, knocked him one down. I've seen some poor spacing so far for Portsmouth Sports Club. Guys not getting deep in the corners. Nice dirk shot that time by Tyler Burton for Villanova. But again, they kind of got lucky because their spacing was off. Looks like the play broke down. The IQ to space the floor is one thing that will definitely stick out here. You see so little of it. When you see a guy who does understand it, it really does stick out. And just another one of those small things that's a separator. That basket by Tristan Arona. Tristan Arona from Cleveland State gets to his left hand, goes off of two feet, finishes strong off the glass. A couple of buckets early for him out of Cleveland State. The pump fake, the old-fashioned play, always works. Aaron Estrada from Alabama gets into the scorebook. Playing off two feet, our uh, good friend Ryan Pannone would love the two-footed finish there. Here comes Aaron Estrada, looks to get back-to-back -back buckets. Looks for the foul, doesn't get it. And now we've got a track meet going on with both teams. Nice extra pass to the corner. Good-looking basketball right there. Good play, make or miss, still a good play. Right now, Johnny King wisely pulls it out, says, hey, let's run some offense. Ooh. Rano got bailed out that time by a foul by Tyler Wall. No help defense, though. It looked like they were in a five-out set, and it was just one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter for everybody. A little huffing and puffing going out there, too. Guys, uh, you know, these guys are all in the gym working, but it's really hard to simulate live game play. You know, even if you're in the gym playing pickup with your guys, pick up in a live game with, uh, with this type of pressure, with referees, with stop clock stoppages, all of that, it's, it's, a, it's a different deal. So out here, it's easy to kind of see who, who, what type of shape everybody's in. Well, yeah, and, and all these guys, again, are coming from college where you have the 16 and under media, the 12 and under. There's no media timeouts here. There's no reviews. There's, uh, there's no stoppages. Um, and you've only got eight guys on your roster, so I don't care where you're at in the rotation. You're you could get a lot of minutes. <laughs> Matt, you might find some minutes out here, man. I don't know if my ankles are still built for that. This is Tristan Aranu out of 
Cleveland State, 6'8". He's been really active. Came off the bench this game. He's uh, found himself getting to the line several times. I did not see Cleveland State play this year, but he's a good-looking forward prospect. Nice free throw stroke there to tie this game up after Johnny, Johnny King was down early. They've now tied it up with the first quarter just about complete here. Estrada trying to assert himself, no question. A.J. Hogard out of Michigan State, though, is on him like glue. And some sloppy play here for Portsmouth Sports Club. They are just two guys in the corner that time. They're, they're not really matched up. And that's a just a prayer thrown up before the shot clock. And let's see if they can take advantage. But a sloppy turnover. So they're coming right back. See, right there, Matt, you're going to hear me preaching a little bit here, but I think that should be counted as a block shot. You've heard me say that. That's in my rules to change basketball. If the shot was going up and they would count it as an AM one then the block should count after the whistle. We're, we're, we're not even at the end of the first quarter of the first game, and the hot takes are sizzling from I'm already trying to change. I'm already trying to change the game. Dr. Naismith is rolling in his grave. If they ever put me on the world basketball committee, then uh, that will be my first action on the books. Man, that time Soriano took on four guys oh. and it led to a big time throwdown by Tyler Wall, number 15 from Wisconsin. That's just poor effort there by Blue. They had four guys in the paint and they let Soriano get to it. Back-to-back -back turnovers by Xavier Johnson. Oh. Letting them play at the rim, that's about the third, fourth time we've seen somebody end up on their back. As you said earlier, there's a, there's a little bit of a tradition here of letting them play, and then you'll get the occasional game with the tight whistle. Get, get a little bit of everything here. Yeah, I personally like, like the loose whistle, so I'm, I'm glad to see letting them go. Uh, poor, again, poor spacing. Got to get the ball out of the corner. Oh. Uh, Soriano did a great job that time of clearing out. Gave Estrada a wide open layup, and we've got another foul. Estrada with another good two-footed finish there. Get, went up strong, able to draw the foul. Some good habits, good habits. If you watched Alabama this year, see a lot of guys getting in the paint. Him and Mark Sears getting to two feet, pivoting, creating space, finding an angle, finishing strong. And a lot of that is a, you know, a testament to Ryan Pannone, who we both know very well. Got to give Ryan Pannone a shout out. Heck of a coach was a big reason for Alabama's success this year as an assistant. So Estrada looks to put the second one in here to give Portsmouth Sports Club a three-point lead, and he does just that. So Johnny King's going to be looking for one shot here with less than 10 seconds left. Let's see what Xavier Johnson gets a high ball screen, kicks it out, wide open. Mid-range goes off the mark for Tristan Arano. And that's it. We've completed the first quarter of play here at the 70th annual Portsmouth Invitational Tournament. We'll be right back after this break. Again, Matt, we've got a mix of 
different rule types. So we've got 40 minute games, but they're broken down to four 10 minute quarters. So very, I forgot to mention FIBA rules. So we have a mix of FIBA rules, NCAA rules, and NBA rules, which is really cool. Um, just another thing that makes Portsmouth very unique and honestly my favorite event of the year. Say taking the, the shot clock comes in, uh, into effect as well. This is the first time a lot of these guys have played with a 24 second clock and you've seen a couple uh, prayers at the rim towards into shot clocks, just them being used to having a little more time to operate. There's Tolu Smith comes right into it, gets to his left hand. Nice little hook shot off the backboard. And both teams' bigs are really getting active early. No surprise for Tolu. If you go back to the fall, Tolu was SEC uh, Player of the Year preseason. That time Xavier Johnson said, no suit for you, and just blocks it. There's Tristan Arana, who has been – you know, honestly, if you could pick an MVP, which we never do in the first quarter, he might be the guy. I mean, he's been all over the place. Keeping plays alive, been able to finish at the rim, hit a couple jumpers, a, a lot to like from him so far. Had a couple of blocks, too, on the other side. There he is with the rebound. Here comes Johnny King out in the break. Good. Ah. Kevin Cross that time just missed it. Nice take, though. Here comes Estrada, gets it off to Soriano, and he throws down the SLD, first SLD of the game. Shaq like dunk for Joel Soriano, just a beast in the paint. They've really had a hard time handling him inside. Strong, strong body. A definition of a wide load. There's Xavier Johnson out of SIU who, again, I did not see him this year, but he is really active defensively. That time gets the nice little finish at the rim. Oh, another no call. They're letting him play. Here comes Johnson. Gets it off. There he is, Mr. Tolu Smith, the third out of Mississippi State with the throwdown. White waste, no time. Coming right back. There's K.J. Jones. Earns himself a free trip to the line. K.J. Jones out of Emmanuel College. Division two national player of the year. One of the more intriguing players here for sure. Just talking to people here before the event started about people they're kind of interested to see and get an, an evaluation in a different setting. He, he, he's a guy there's a lot of people kind of just curious to see what, what he's really capable of. And he went to the free throw line a lot this year. When I say a lot, uh, there was games where he was going to the line 14, 15 times. Uh, in, in the game, so he is very comfortable from that 15-foot strike. And after a slow start offensively, Matt, we've, uh, we've battled back here and got an exciting game, really close, which is good to see. Guys, guys in a full sweat now, getting a feel for each other, starting to, starting to get back to just playing ball how they know how to. Blue really looking to take advantage of their size advantage down in the paint, another easy bucket for Tolu Smith. Can't leave, cannot leave Estrada wide open. That time miscommunication on the high ball screen leaves open a shooter from Alabama, not good. It's like a form shot. Go right back to Smith in the post. This is a good big man battle with Soriano. That time he makes him pick up his dribble. A no box out leads to a wide open three. That was A.J. Hoggard out of Michigan State with the miss. Good play. Here's Pember from his favorite spot. He's had two of those just right there on line, but that's what he does. He trails and kind of shades out to the three-point line. Looks for that long ball. Got a few more substitutions here. Hunter Couture, number 10, comes back in the game from Blue. Really liking the activity from uh, Alan Flanagan so far. Number 11 in blue. 
Some, some banging going on right now. Uh oh, some old fashioned feet work that time by Tolu Smith. Stayed with the play, kept his pivot foot, kept you on the head fake, and eventually got a wide open shot. Nice little move there by Tolu Smith. The two bigs for Johnny King I'm really impressed with. Tolu doing his best uh, big fundamental there. Couple pivots, couple bumps, shot fake. It's like a clinic. Johnny King's lucky that time. Left Estrada wide open at the top. That's his shot. They've seen that dribble handoff action on this side close to us a lot. No question. Takes the bump. Oh, and that time Tristan Arano goes way upstairs to throw it down. Continuing to fill up the stat sheet, making plays in a lot of different ways so far to uh, a guy who's definitely catching the eye of anybody in the gym. Tristan Arano has really been impressive this game. Another three-point miss for Portsmouth Sports Club, and Johnny King's wasting no time. They're going to run. I think the Janney crew uh, group out there right now in blue, they've kind of found a group that, w that works together. They've definitely got a lot of energy, so... Jenny King that time just off the foot turns it over. But, man, they came. They were down 10-1, Matt, in this game early on. And they are now up by five. So coaches getting a feel for each other. Players getting a uh, feel for each other. And, and you see what happens. We're going to take a quick timeout as we have a timeout on the court. We'll be right back. These are like uh, big shots, AAU big shots timeout, Matt. I, I'm accustomed to those timeouts. I believe you are too. They tell you you have a minute break and you end up getting about 15 seconds by the time you get your guys in. You better have a plan for your timeout because you got about eight seconds to, to share your plan. Your guys better be spreading to the bench. <laughs> so here we go, coming out of the timeout. Got Jermaine Cousinard out of Oregon, looks for the double high ball screen. Pulls it himself. That's, I believe, four straight three-point misses for Portsmouth Sports Club. That NBA three-point line is an adjustment for these guys. Like to see the ball get moving here a little bit more. Ball see more than one side of the floor. Tough rainbow shot that time for Shahada Wells from McNeese State. His coach here. To watch him. That time it's a force for Alan Flanagan, who was active early. Gets in the game and kind of forced that one up. Like to see him use the right hand there. So he can use his body a little bit more. Try to force it up with the left hand. Went out of bounds. So. Go getting back to this double high drag. I'm seeing this quite a bit from the Portsmouth group. Great look to Soriano who finishes the hoop and the hard. Do we think it's safe to say Soriano is probably a pretty tough guy playing for Rick Pitino? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. He's uh, he's played for one of the legends, and you know a lot of people are upset that St. John's missed the tournament this year. They had a great year. I think uh, UConn's success paired with a number of other teams in, the, in their league shows just what a, what a formidable force it is where maybe they don't get some of the, the love nationally from the, from the media they should. Definitely. They were pretty upset. Declined an invitation to the NIT. We go. Some more bully ball. Another foul. This time, A.J. Hoggard from... Michigan State, talk about playing for a tough coach. Tom Izzo, so we've got some guys that have played for some legends in the game out on the floor. You look at the, the, the teams that represented in this game, talk about 
the history. We've got Tyler Burton for Villanova. Already talked about Joel Signoriano, of course, from St. John's. Here's A.J. Hoggard from Michigan State. I mean, we're talking about not just Power 5 programs, but true blue, blood, blue bloods. A lot of history. Guys have put on a jersey that that means something to a lot of people. It's interesting, too, Matt, watching some of these coaches and their, their play calls. Uh, you know, they just probably learned some of these guys' names just yesterday. So everybody's learning each other. The players are learning each other's names. They're learning what they're supposed to do. So you can see a lot of the same plays here. Again, going into that double drag screen. It's worked last couple of possessions. That time, Soriano looked for the pin down on wall, but instead got it back. And now we've, he's got a mismatch on the post. Nice kick out. Soriano gets it back, says, I'll just take it myself. And that's another shot clock violation. It's at least the second one we've seen from Portsmouth Sports Club. Again, the initial play broke down, and these scouts want to see, okay, if your initial action is going to break down, you know, you've got to get to a high ball screen. You've got to get to something and get a good shot off, which they haven't been able to show yet. Another adjustment is just initiating offense a little bit early. If you watch, you know, NBA, G League basketball, they're getting into their offense quick, getting the ball up the floor in a hurry. And here we've seen some walking the ball up the floor and wasting precious time when you only have 24 seconds on the clock. That was some great uh, action we've seen on this team where they've done that play multiple times, the dribble handoff. Uh, they hand it off, you know, give it to the high, the high post, and then we see the delay action. And that time, Hunter Couture had the really nice pocket pass to the short roller. And uh, that's Tulu Smith that had a heck of a pump fake. That was an Al Jefferson pump fake there, Matt. What a reference. I, would, I didn't have the Al Jefferson reference on my bingo card. You didn't have that one. You weren't ready for that one, I were you, Matt? Not, I was not. You never know what you're going to get from Mr. Blackburn in the booth. I'm just going to pull stuff out, man. The Al Jefferson, Boris D. Al pump fake over here. <laughs> that one sold me. I was ready to go ahead and say the, the shot attempt was coming. He's, he's throwing off the guys in the booth. Here we go, a little horns look. Soriano gets it back. Yep, simple basketball, absolutely. And they're going through Soriano right now. And he's carrying them. Good, some good energy from Soriano on both ends. He is a guy that plays really hard, really tough to handle inside as a load, really, really strong upper body, and he's gotten himself into the paint multiple times, and they're having a hard time handling him. This time showing him he's coming up high on that screen too, showing him moving his feet. That's a three-point field goal for... Keelan Boone, Keelan Boone, Boone out of UNLV. First time we've called his name out, Matt, this game. UNLV had a solid year this year in the Mountain West. No question. Good looking, uh, good looking stroke there. Confident. Yeah, his first shot. So that's always good for players. It's all about confidence. You come out here, obviously, in this setting and uh, get your first one to go down. It could really be a game changer for the uh, rest of the event. Tyler Wall escapes two defenders, gets that one high off the glass. We're going to have another timeout. We're going to take one with them. We'll be right back.
And we're back here for the final two minutes and 38 seconds of this first half in game number one from the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament 2024. Sorry, I had to steal that. You're, you're, hey, you always Matt. love those intros. I, once in a while, I gotta, I gotta take a stab at it. Hey, man, you're, you're the best, man. We'll put you on anytime you want to jump in. This time, <laughs> Portsmouth Sports Club coming out little run and jump action. You don't see that a lot at the Portsmouth Invitational. Drew Pember that time was kind of like a rover out of the timeout. Tried to mix it up there a little bit. We have a timeout on the floor. And we're back to uh, another timeout. Yeah, I think that's it. We're setting ports with records here. Uh, two timeouts in less than five seconds. So we're going to take one with them. And I'm not even exactly sure, Matt, what team took that timeout, but two timeouts in six seconds. Somebody saw something that they did not want to see from the coaching staff's angle. Uh, I'm not sure how many timeouts each team gets. Is it like the fouls where it's unlimited? It's a good question. Or is it like a coast-to-coast -coast camp where you could pay off the directors for extra timeouts? Don't share your secrets. Don't share your business secrets. That's how Matt Jones gets to the championship routinely. <laughs> Get a little, a little jump ball here. Little NBA rules mixed in. Like we said, it's a solid mix between NBA, NCAA, and FIBA rules. Easy tip. That was Kevin Cross with the easy tip. They missed him, though. He's wide open at the top of the key. Mr. Tolo Smith hands it off. Got Boone back to back threes for Keelan Boone. Out of UNLV, that's a long trip. That's a Las hike. Vegas to Virginia. That's a hike. Another good looking stroke. Good rotation. Shoots a beautiful ball. I like his activity too defensively. In fairness, it is always a little bit easier to give that defensive effort when you've knocked a couple down. Matt Jones knows all about that. You won't see him play in defense, ladies and gentlemen, unless he makes a three. You know me too. Well. I don't know anything about that. I'm not, I'm not necessarily the shooter. I, they pay me big money, Matt, to defend guys like yourself. He's the men's league charge taker I'm on the broadcast with. Not the charge taker. Not the charge taker. I try to just go up there and block the shot, man. Your, your deductible is too high for that. <laughs> We've got uh, Soriano is going to take a seat. And, uh, Tyler Wall is going to check in. So we'll see if uh, Johnny King could take advantage here without Soriano in the paint. Good find. Boom. Wide open corner three ball. Xavier Johnson. Guard out of SIU. And Hunter Gator just, he read the Euro step perfectly, just took it right away from him, got it out in transition, and that's your man, Kalen Boone. Three for three from three for Mr. UNLV. A little heat check, three for three. <laughs> Mr. Vegas himself with three triples in a row. KJ Jones, that's what he does. He gets to the teeth of the defense, plays off of two feet, showing off the footwork, and that time got hit a little bit in the eye. Found, finds himself another trip to the free throw line. And uh, before you know it, Matt, I didn't even look up in the scoreboard last few minutes, but Johnny King has really pulled away. Now up 12 points, largest lead for either team of this game. Finding some rhythm here. I think both teams have kind of kind of relaxed, shook off the, the drive or the flight, and got used to each other, and now they're just out here hooping, which is always good to see. Maybe they're just anxious to get in that uh, media hospitality room. What do you think, Matt? I'm counting down the seconds <laughs> for my first trip. Yeah, this is going to be first of many for myself. Nice adjustment there that time. 
They look for the dribble handoff. He escapes, leaves an empty corner this time for Smith. He pushed it, didn't get the bounce. Now Portsmouth looks to cut into this lead. Nice pump fake for Pember. Finds K.J. Jones for three. Back of the rim. Nice rebound that time for Smith. Smith also filling up the stat sheet. <laughs> that, that time uh, he ran into his, that was uh, Oriana ran into his own man. <laughs> uh, Xavier Johnson's laughing about it a little bit. Made the nice pass and then just kind of continued through the pass and ran into him. Found his own guy. Quick hands there. And let's see if uh, Johnny King looks like they're going to make the wise decision to hold for one shot here. Under Couture gets it back on the handoff. Probably looking for a high ball screen. Maybe not. Gets him in a hostage dribble. Nice floater. And easy tip in there by Smith. So first half complete. The guest, Johnny King, with a 47-35 lead over Portsmouth Sports Club. We're going to take a break here at halftime, probably hit up the hospitality room, and we will be back in the second half.
And we're coming back to you. Halftime winding down here. Quick little trip to the hospitality room for my partner here. I got him some M&Ms. He's looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I had to take advantage of every second that of that halftime break. As we start this second half, we've got an 11-point lead for Janny King in the blue uniforms. They are currently up 11 points on Portsmouth Sports Club in the white. Some strong performances there in the first half. Tolo Smith with a good, a good showing out of Mississippi State. Keelan Boone from UNLV knocking it down from three. Uh, Drew Pember coming out aggressive from UNC Asheville. Aaron Estrada as well. Looking forward to uh, so some more uh, game action here. Yeah, man, it was uh, Matt. It was a great first half. Both teams started a little slow. They got rolling, and I'm uh, really excited about the second half. We'll see if um, if Portsmouth could climb their way back into it. A little confusion on the offensive end here. Shot clock now down to three. Tough step back. You're not going to get that foul out here, buddy. And uh, that's, that was playing again that was looking for the whistle. And um, they don't call a lot out here, so that's one thing that you're not going to get, is that, that foul. Prayer number five today, we'll say. No, no prayers answered thus far. That's Tyler Burton getting away with a little carry. That looks to be off his leg, and it is. Good call there by number 57, the official in gray and black. I'm sure his mom's at home smiling, appreciating the shout-out of her, her little boy from you. A little double drag. We've Action we've seen plenty from both teams here thus far. <laughs> we had a dollar for every time we've seen a double drag or a floppy action, we, um, we'll be rich men by the end of this broadcast. It's a simple game. Nice shot there, a little fadeaway from Kevin Cross out of Tulane, good shot. He loves that turnaround. If you caught any of Tulane's games this year, you see quite, quite a few of those. Finds a matchup he likes and goes to work. Soriano patting his own stats there with a couple That's offensive a rebounds. Soriano St. John's. Little too much mustard on that hot dog that time by A.J. Hoggard. Tom Thibodeau would not be happy. Or not Tom Thibodeau, Tom Izzo. <laughs> I don't Tom think and Thibodeau would be happy. <laughs> I think that play would frustrate any coach he named. <laughs> Any for, any coach named Tom, especially. Soriona finds himself back on the free throw line where he's lived today. Kind roll right there. These rosters, Matt, are pretty interesting. Of course, Portsmouth Sports Club and White, they've really, you know, they've got one center listed, which is Soriano, and that's true because Wall and Pember are much more of perimeter-oriented guys. But Johnny King, I feel like with Smith and uh, Arana are both, uh, even though they list Arana as a four, he's, he's been playing a lot inside. A little messy that time on the high entry. That's a tough finish, great body control that time by A.J. Hogger Jr. Went up against a big, challenged him, and won the challenge. And again, too much that time, too much dribbling. Here we go, we got a two-on-one fast break. Good follow-up there by Cross, not didn't giving up on the play. Absolutely, didn't give up on it, got an easy one, so. Even with pros, you can't assume. We've got an early timeout this time by Portsmouth Sports Club who finds themselves now down 14 points. And after that initial 
burst, Matt, by Portsmouth Sports Club in the first three minutes of this game. They found themselves up 10 to one. Since that, those first three minutes, they've scored a total of 28 points compared to 51 for uh, Johnny King. So that's a huge uh, swing. A true game of runs. And they're on quite a run right now. This run's lasted for a while, so we're going to stay with you as these timeouts don't usually last too long as we've talked about. But the gym's filled up nicely. And just to remind everybody out there listening that we have another game tonight at 9 p.m. And uh, Matt, we will be back on the call. I know I'm going to be back on the call tomorrow for the 315 game joined by Mr. Tanner Massey and you will be back on the call tomorrow for the 7 p.m. game joined by David Solomon. So you guys that are listening already gotten a few shout outs, a few texts. I know you've gotten the same, Matt, with our listeners and we appreciate all the love, all support that's coming our way. And uh, we, we hope you guys join us over the link here of the, of the four days. Everybody that's watching, by the way, if you guys ever get a chance to come out to the Portsmouth Invitational, it's definitely an event for basketball enthusiasts that uh, they will not forget. A lot of access. You're close to the action. You're close to you're close to everything. And then, as we said at the early in the, the pregame, it, it's a high school venue with a high school feel with pro players. Absolutely. Blue doing a great job of switching on the ball and off the ball. Forces Portsmouth Sports Club now late into the clock with a contested three. Great defense that time by Yanni King out of the timeout. Johnny King, I'm sorry. Here's Arano, looks to get right back to where he was in the first half, which was active. And uh, see if they could call this on the floor, Matt, or oh, they could call it on a shot. So he gets back to the free throw line. If, if there's one thing you're going to see from these NBA level, G League level referees, if you reach, they're going to call it. That, that you can get away with a lot with your body and some other things, but if you if you reach and you make any sort of contact on a hand or wrist, you best believe they're going to call it. It's a really good observation. Matt, I'm hoping uh, I'm not you know, exactly cheering from one team or the other, but these games are a lot more exciting to call when we have some tight finishes. I remember, what was it, two years ago, Matt, we had a triple, I believe it was a triple overtime game in the first night. Uh, and that was, I mean, I don't know if I was on the call for that game or not, but I remember watching it and it was, it was pretty exciting. They usually go to sudden death when it gets that deep. They got a schedule to keep. I'm not sure sudden death fits FIBA, NBA, or uh, NCAA rules. That must be one of those rules, kind of like the unlimited fouls, where it's just the, the Portsmouth okay, rules. Uh, that's going to be a gold 10 on Soriano. He knew it, too, as soon as he touched it. Got to love Soriano's activity, though. We, we've mentioned him multiple times throughout the broadcast. Just continues to put himself in the play on both ends of the floor. You know, he's listed at Matt at 6'11", 250, but he is really light on his feet. And he, I've seen him come out on ball screen coverage multiple times. And that time he throws down another two-hand thunder Jones, dunk. Jones, hangs the net on the dunk. That's something only Matt Jones knows how to do. Must have known another Matt Jones, because this one is not built for that. <laughs> Nice one extra pass to the top. Hoggard looks to operate on the empty side, kicks it over Good opposite D. side. Yes, sir. Top. Kevin Cross with the ball at the top. Great defense by White, keeps the ball in front, forces a tough shot, but they don't box out. And here's Hoggard for a three off the front of the rim. Another offensive rebound by Johnny King. That's uh, Flanagan all over the boards. We've got to box out. This small ball lineup, Janny King playing with a lot of activity on the offensive glass. Some hard guys to check out. It's a tough shot, though, that time. Soriano with the good contest. Wordsmith looks to run. Wide open three by number 10, Mr. Jermaine Cousinard out of Oregon. And they're getting back into this one. Now finds themselves down just single digits about halfway through the third.
And that's what Johnny King has done all game, I feel like, is feed the post, feed the mid-coast, and they've just played bully ball. A lot of length and athleticism out there. Mismatches when they're catching it anywhere near the rim, post or mid-post. I mentioned that to you off the mic before the game started. I said, Johnny King's has some athletes, and they, they've shown that, absolutely. Nice crossover there by Cosinard, but gets it taken away, and here, here's the break for Johnny King. Wisely slows it down, gets it back out. Flynn again, surveys. Great defense that time by Cousinard, and He took a shot to the face, but he earned that one. Flanagan trying to do a little bit too much there, a little bit too much of an open gym type play versus a, 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 this for this type of setting when we're trying to be, be seen in our best light. And Matt, we've seen another timeout, so we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be right back. We are back now, Matt, and I'm going to follow up, Matt, off of what we just saw. Uh, you were talking about um, kind of doing a little bit too much. And, you know, these guys that are getting seen by teams from all over the world, you know, of course, all these guys have dreams in the NBA, but many of them, of course, will end up playing in the G League and overseas. But a lot of it is you, you don't want to get yourself crossed off a list too early. You want to make sure you do what you're supposed to be doing. Do what you did to get you here. That's a great way to put it. Play within yourself is what co some coaches may say. Nice pump fake there by KJ Jones. Misses off the back of the backboard. And a foul on the floor is Mr. Soriano again, active on the glass. I don't have official stats in front of me, but he's got to have a double-double. I'm sitting here looking with our production team, pulling up the map. We've got people from literally all over the globe right now, a speckling of, of dots literally around the world. I think all seven continents accounted for right now. Looking like your passport, Matt. Got one more to go, one more continent. Estrada that time tried to make something happen, not aware of the shot clock. And uh, another shot clock violation for Portsmouth Sports Club, unofficially by my count, that's the third one this game. It's an adjustment, 24 seconds, 30 seconds. It's a, it's a big drop off. It, sometimes it can be hard to feel as a fan, but you're seeing the difference here with just the style of the play. That time they chased off Hunter Couture off the line. Wisely kicks it out. You don't want to double down too much with Gator floating out. Soriano can, can battle his way on the post himself. I'm not sure why you would dig down or double. Soriano does a great job without fouling. Forces the, the turnover that time by Smith. And Ports with Sports Club gets it out. KJ Jones gets fouled. We're seeing some fouls here, Matt, uh, by both teams. Little Getting a little messy. It's that time of the game. As we said, you know, conditioning definitely a factor. And when you only got eight bodies, it, it can be a little bit different. The game slowed down, too. Getting a lot more into half court. Nice pocket pass there. Soriano uses the Tim Duncan glass. Great touch there from about 12 feet for Soriano, who's really, I would say, he's the MVP so far for Portsmouth Sports Club in this game. The big fundamental. Another another uh, nice uh, old-fashioned play off the glass there after some, some good pivot work earlier. A, a lot to like, playing within himself like we talked about. A little bit too much one-on-one -on -one here for Johnny King. Now multiple possessions, a couple of turnovers. Let's see if Portsmouth could come into this deficit. That ball gets tipped, and we've got a, looks like some highlights about to happen. The left-hand throwdown for hey, Tristan Arana. Tristan and Aruna out of Cleveland State. Soriano wanted to get that one back. Wanted to get that one back too. <laughs> Filling up his stat sheet one way or the other. 
staying active. The big fella's battling. We like to see that. He's just always kind of around the ball. Finds a way, puts his, willing to put his nose anywhere to get a basketball. Every time Portsmouth kind of, you know, cuts the lead or cuts the deficit to about eight or nine, you know, they give up a few and then it's right back to 12, 13, which is where it stands right now. Soriano hits the first. It's a long game and it's a game of runs. Let's see who, who, who's got a run left at him. I want to give a shout out, Matt. You talked about our production team here at Prep Spin. They do an awesome job with this event. This is multiple years now that they've done the Portsmouth streaming and they do an, a great job. Gives, a, gives us a very professional feel in the booth and sets us up and does a really good job. So definitely stay tuned for the rest of the week if, if you're watching online. High definition viewing. I'm not sure about high definition listening, but high definition viewing. We do the best we can. There's Mr. Tolu Smith out of Mississippi. Have it called his name out as much in the second half of this game as we did the first half. But uh, that time he said, hey, remember me. I'm down here. I've been active all game. And him and Tristan Serrano are kind of in a battle right now, I think, between those two to see who uh, potentially could get the the coast-to-coast the -coast award for the unofficial sponsor for game one MVP here at Portsmouth. Two big bodies, relentless, continuing to compete. There's uh, Xavier Johnson doing something small there, denying the ball from Aaron Estrada. He's been all over the place, number three in blue defensively in this game. And uh, because of that, because they took away the point guard, you saw confusion down here. Those are those little things, Matt, the coaches like to see. And that time it caused a turnover. But I would say that would be caused by Xavier Johnson. A, a bit of an empty possession, all because of one guy's effort. Here's Boone with the ball. It was three for three in the first half from three. This time he goes with the nice Jimmy Butler fadeaway in the post. He's got a beautiful stroke, Matt. Feathery, soft touch, good rotation, able to get it over, finish over length, a, a lot to like. Another miscommunication, another turnover. Here's Boone, he said, okay, oh, I thought he was gonna let that one go. He faked me out. It had heat check written all over it. Instead, gets it to Mr. Smith in the post. The double team comes, Couture makes the wise extra pass. And he gets himself an assist as Mr. Tristan Arano. This time he goes outside, showing off the range. And uh, man, I mean, he has been really, really impressive from Cleveland State this game. He extended out, get it. 18 point lead. There's a block on the defensive end by Hunter Couture. And Portsmouth Sports Club looks tired right now, man. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. Hunter Couture with that quick release, and you knew he wasn't going to miss many. Boom, man. he was due, he was due. It's amazing the energy that is created when the ball is shared. And right now, Blue has exactly that. They've got energy, and they are up 21 points in this first game. And, they, I mean, right now it's starting on the defensive end, though, Matt. I mean, Hunter Couture all over the ball. I think a lot of this started with Xavier Johnson, Keelan, Keelan Boone all over the ball, too. And all these guys, there's a lot of linked athleticism and high motors on the floor right now for Johnny King. They're definitely a formidable group, have a little bit of everything and have, have found, found some chemistry playing together, just playing the right way. That time the help was just a little bit late from Keelan Boone and he knows it, but still a solid defensive effort. A little bit of a size advantage this time for Mr. Smith, but Burton does a great job of getting his hands on the ball. Good right. effort there from Couture, getting, getting back in the play to make a contest. Boone with the shot at the buzzer off the mark. And we go into the fourth corner with Johnny King up 19 on Portsmouth Sports Club.
And we're coming back to you to start the fourth quarter here in game number one at the 2024 Portsmouth Invitational Tournament. Right now, a big time lead, 19 points for Janny King in blue over Portsmouth Sports Club in white. Uh, was able to kind of stretch out the lead right there. Uh, the Janny, Janny King crew was just sharing the ball, playing the right way, making the simple play. Uh, Let's see what, what happens here with the Portsmouth group in white, if they're able to come back, get kind of back in a flow, get to share in the ball, see the ball go in the hole a little bit. Matt, I'm just upset that I let a quarter break go by without getting some of these peanut M&Ms, man. Peanut M&Ms are undefeated. There's no question there. Let's see what they do here out of the quarter break. Little ATO draw up. That's uh, Strada gets caught in traffic, gets it out. Another confusion on the offensive end, and they're going to have to heave it up just to avoid the shot clock violation, which they get anyway. And again, just a little confusion, poor spacing by Ports with Sports Club. And I didn't, you know, Drew um, Pember was looking. He didn't know whether to go ball screen, whether to not. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the type of possessions you're, you don't want to have when you're down 19. I think something else to keep in mind here, you know, you're down 19 if you're, you're Portsmouth Sports Club. How are you going to respond? When you're being, when you're in this environment, everything is being evaluated. Your body language, your effort, all of those things. So you, you, you really can't afford to play the scoreboard when it's, you know, your future we're talking about. No, Matt, that's an excellent point. Uh, yes, you want to win while you're out here, of course, but at the same time, it is a showcase. So like you said, so you're, you are being watched. I mean, whether you're up 10 or down 20, uh, you've got to play the same way. You're not just showcasing your talent. You're, you're showcasing your character, what you're about. And blue is just all over the boards. You've got to stay in this game. Like you said, you can't just turn over and, and stop. And the same thing for blue, though, man. If you're, if you're Johnny King, you don't want to stop playing just because you're up 17. You've got to stay in it and... You know, if you're up, you don't want to start getting sloppy. No question. You're spot on. Just quick shots here on both sides for both teams. And Estrada looks to slow it down, get a set. That's a guy you don't want to leave open at the top of the key. Great hustle there by Burton. Some good team play there. Giving it up early in transition. Everybody running, you're going to have options. Simple basketball, as we keep saying. Simple basketball wins. And Tolu Smith, no stranger to the foul line this game. Again, the winner, Matt, of this game will play on Friday, so they get the break. The loser of this game will play the 315 game tomorrow versus the loser from the 9 o'clock game tonight, which is the game following ours. So everybody's going to get three games at this tournament. Nice little stop and go that time from Estrada. Might have gotten away from a little hook. A nice lefty finish at the end. A.J. Hoggard looks for the screen, gets it off to Boone, right back to Hoggard. In the corner of Flanagan, to Boone. A lot of big wings on the floor right now for Johnny King. Tough shot. Hand in his face that time by Estrada. Good defense. And Pimper hit one of those early, Matt. Just hasn't re really been able to find it since then. A little messy right now for both teams. I think teams are getting, these guys are getting tired. There's a lot of, some, some heavy breaths happening on both ends. And that's a tired foul right there by Colu Smith. Johnny King is not careful. All it takes is a couple of made threes, and we're going to have a ball game. So, Portsmouth Sports Club, Tyler Burton for Villanova. I like him. He's He's been up and down a little bit this game, but he's made some real hustle plays. He's been fighting. 
has a lot of intangibles. Gotta like him. Six foot seven, can shoot it. Above average athlete, with some defensive versatility. We've seen him guard in some different positions. Uh, you know, a, a lot to like for sure. Here he looks to finish off the old fashioned three point play, which he does. Brings his team back to 13 points down. They were down by close to 20 here just a few minutes ago. Another missed layup that time for Johnny King. Nobody on the offensive class. And, but again, another turnover by Portsmouth. Transition three. Quick shot by Boone. We may have entered full open gym mode at this <laughs> point. We've entered all-star game mode. Strada gets to that left with the finish. And now that we've got ourselves maybe a ball game down 11, let's we'll see if they've got another run. You talked about runs. Another force that time for Johnny King. And just too much muscle that time for Flanagan. Out of Mississippi, 6'6", 217. Active guy at that three position. A little bit of a float on that pass by Estrada, looking for Soriano. Soriano has been rested though, so let's look to see if they can establish him on the block for these last six minutes of this game. Just like to see both teams getting a little offense, try to try to execute something, get some ball reversals, get back to just keeping it simple. KIS, baby. Soriano keeping it himself. Strada looked at the three, decides to get it off to Burton. Burton looks inside to Soriano, and that's his shot, showing off his touch. They're establishing him on the black block. He's doing what he's done all game, carrying Portsmouth Sports Club. A, a real, real solid game from him today. Tristan Oriano is just, he showcased it all, Matt. That time he brings it up, able to create his own offense. And now this the speed, the pace is picked up just a bit here for both teams. Another turnover. And Estrada's shifty, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Stop on a dime and then explode back out. Keep you on your toes as a defender. I mean, at this rate, you know, I'd look pretty good as a player, Matt. I'd just shoot the ball and want Soriano to get the rebound. That's what he's done all game. Effective offense. So Portsmouth Sportsman Club now down just nine as we enter another break. We'll be right back. And we're back after that lengthy timeout. Allowed me to get a few peanut M&Ms, Matt. Cup's starting to look a little empty over there. It is. I'm going to have to go back. So, Matt, who is your inspiration? Who's, who's a guy that you really look up to in the, uh, the broadcast booth? Who's some of your favorites on the mic? My clear number one is none other than Mr. Gus Johnson. The versatility. College basketball, he's done NFL does NCAA football, you name it, he's done it, and it's electric. I love it, man. That one, that one took me by surprise. I like it. Personally, I like a mix of Bill Walton and Jeff Van Gundy. You look a little bit more like Van Gundy. <laughs> yeah, I'm missing the hair that, that Walton used to have. 
All right, let's see if uh, Portsmouth Sports Club, they're on a little mini run here. Got it into single digits. Let's see if they can keep it close. Soriano battling down there. And Burton with a nice mid-range jumper gets it back to seven points. This is the closest they've been in a while, Matt. All of a sudden, we have ourselves a ball game. This is what we wanted. Let's see the response here by Johnny King. They go to the block, which is where they've gone all day. They've got a size of man. Tristan Aranu, again, out of Cleveland State, he's shown it all. On the perimeter, in the paint, shown off the ball handling, the shot, the post work. Back to our friend Soriano, drawing a foul. He is a load down there. That time he did a great job. He saw Flanagan. Like you said, if you see their arms down, he kind of ripped through and got himself to the line. And I think the coaches see that, Matt, and they know that uh, they're a little undersized. And we have another timeout. This must be a record number of timeouts this year at Portsmouth. And uh, we're going to take one with them, though, so we'll be right back. And we're back here for our last four minutes and change in the fourth quarter of game number one here at the Portsmouth Invitational Tournament. We've seen the lead stretch all the way out to 17. Now it's shrunk down. What are you seeing here, James? Well, I mean, that was a huge response that time by Johnny King. They were, you know, on a big scoring drought, and they got it down to their man, Tristan, on the block, which that was their bread and butter all game. But... Uh, Right now, still, they haven't really been able to have an answer for Mr. Joel Soriano. I'd, I'd maybe look out of that timeout, Matt, for a, some double teams, at least some stunts on the block. The Soriano right now is just a load that they cannot handle. A good free throw shooter, too. I mean, he's been on there a lot, and he's been able to capitalize, showing the touch like we've talked about on the shot. That's really important for bigs to be able to earn it after getting fouled. Back down to seven. They go right back to Big Tolo Smith. No double coming, one on one. Got to the left. I'd like to see Soriano push him out a little bit there. He's got the size advantage physically. He can't let him get that deep. You stole the words right out of my mouth. Tolu going right down to his spot on the floor with little resistance, sealing, and then boom. Great backdoor find that time from Soriano to Tyler Burton. Burton doing a nice job of faking outside and uh, cutting because of the strong deny. Good looking 45 cut there. Staple of offense in the NBA and abroad. Tolu Smooth that time just outside the bottom of the net. Here comes Sportsman. Let's see if they can get this thing. Oh, heck of a block that time by Tristan Arana. Showing it on both ends here, ladies and gentlemen. And they've got numbers. Let's see if they can take advantage. A little dipsy do from Hunter Couture. Gets it back to the man that got the block. Boom! Big time shot. That was a huge play, Matt. Took away the, the two-point shot by Estrada on one end, then comes back. That's a five-point swing where I come from. Showing what he can do on both ends. Good patience that time by Purton has gotten rewarded by a couple of off ball cuts. That time gets it from Estrada. But you got to get stops on this end. I mean, they keep getting down seven, eight, but every single time Johnny King comes back and pushes it back to double digits. Got to get stops. Under Gator with another three. That's the second one of the half, and that's what he does. It's just got that tight, compact stroke. Just takes the, the split second for him to get it off. Really tough to guard. Burton surveying, dancing in the mid post. 
keeps his dribble, gets it out. Soriano going to show off the long range bucket, and he does. That's his first long distance shot of the game. This Tolu Smith matchup versus Joel Soriano has been a, been a great one here in game number one. The referee, number 57, who's already been on the call once, did not really want to call that one, but he does. And I don't know, I'm thinking of a little, a little possible flop on that play. A little flop. I don't even know if it's a little flop, a big flop. <laughs> and we have, we thought we were going to have a timeout, but instead we've got some substitutions here for both clubs. Still just an eight-point game with a 145 here to go. A couple, a couple quick buckets. And we're going to head to a quick timeout here. Matt, you see any uh, any kicks out there on the floor that that uh, that you really fancy too? Thinking right now, uh, number twenty-four Tolu Smith with some bright orange and yellow Adidas on, representing uh, an Adidas school at Mississippi State. This is the first pair that probably jump out at me. Uh, the Nike GT Low Cut, seeing quite a few pair of those. Probably one of the more popular shoes you see around college basketball these days. What about for you? Well. Honestly, Matt, I'm going to go ahead and say nobody, man. I'm partial to Jordans, and I don't see any Jordans out there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say nobody for myself, which I'm honestly pretty disappointed about. I wanted to give it to somebody, but nobody's going to get that, uh, that honor for me tonight. Little touch foul there on the perimeter. And I'm not sure if there's enough time. I mean, there is enough time, but in an event like this, eight points with a minute and a half. Again, these guys not knowing each other. Uh, we'll see if Johnny King. Oh, well, yeah, I thought they were conversed to call, but they're not. So they've got 14 seconds here on the clock. They really need a bucket right now. They go to Soriano, operating from that high post area where he likes to be. Not the shot that they were probably looking for. That was Wells with the miss. And uh, little little uh, run and jump here. Maybe trying to get a quick turnover before uh, their destiny with the mid-afternoon <laughs> game tomorrow is uh, looming. One minute remaining. Hoggard looks to, he looked to end it on that shot. But they did use a lot of clock, which is what they wanted to do. So now they've got Less than a minute ago, eight points. Maybe they've got Mr. Tracy McGrady somewhere hiding in the gym. He could come out and get his eight points and I believe it was what, about 30 seconds back in the day? I don't, I don't think I've seen Mr. McGrady in here. but <laughs> We've got a host of other ex-NBA players, but I have not seen Mr. McGrady. Here's Soriano goes to his patented over the right shoulder. Fade away, and that's a beautiful shot no matter what the score is. He gets my MVP of the game for Portsmouth Sports Club, for sure. Can't argue with the production he and uh, Tolu Smith have both had. And then also can't forget about uh, number uh, number 14, Tristan Orano from Cleveland State, who's had a, a real solid all-around game. Absolutely. I, I don't know. For me, it, I might give a co-MVP, honestly, to uh, to Orano and to um, Smith. I, we don't have the stats in front of us, Matt, but. Both of those guys almost like took turns on uh, like who, you know, who was going to do what, showing, showing uh, their versatility on both ends. No question. The twin towers out here were 14 in blue and 24 in blue. Tristan Arano is only listed as 6'8", but he plays much bigger. Uh-oh. This might make it a little interesting. And we're going to dribble it out here. Tolu Smith. Nice six-point win for Janny King today over Portsmouth Sports Club. Great game. Thank you, for everybody, for listening. And uh, this is Matt Jones and James Blackburn signing off. We will see you at 9 o'clock for the next game. Thank you.